Here is a simple problem. X is a continuous random variable in the interval 2.89 to 10. What is the probability that X is equal to 3.568? Try it. Okay, let me try to answer this question. I will use the number line. X lies between 2.89 and 10. X1 is a particular value of X. And the probability of x equal to x1 is p of x equal to x1. x2 is another value of x. And the probability that x is equal to x2 is p of x equal to x2. In this way, I calculate the probability of all values of x in this range. Now from a probability theory, we know that the sum of all those probabilities must be equal to 1. But there are infinite number of values of x in this range. So I have infinite number of probabilities and all those probabilities adds to 1. Therefore, the probability that x takes a particular value in this range is infinitesimally small. In other words, 0. That is why we do not calculate the probability that x is equal to a particular value like 3.568. Continuous random variables do not have probability mass function. They have probability distribution function or PDF. X is a continuous random variable in the interval m to n. a and b are in this interval. We want to calculate the probability that x lies in the interval a to b. This probability can be non-zero. To calculate this probability, imagine we have a function fx of x such that integration of this function from a to b will give us the probability. We don't know the exact function, but imagine that it exists. This function must satisfy two criteria. It must be non-negative and integration of this function from m to n, the whole domain of x, must be equal to 1. This function is called probability density function. Note the word density in PDF. The PDF is not a probability. It is a density, probability per interval. Therefore, unlike a PMF, it can be greater than 1. Now, just like CDF of a discrete random distribution, we can define CDF of a continuous random distribution also. We will use the PDF in place of PMF and in place of summation, we will have integration. Similarly, we define the mu -th moment as the integration of x to the power mu into the PDF. Note that you are integrating for the complete interval from m to n. So if we know the PDF, we can have the expectation or mean and also the variance of the second central moment. All the theorems of mean and variance that we learned earlier are valid for continuous distribution also. There are several well-characterized continuous distribution. We will discuss three of those. Start with the uniform distribution. x lies between m and n. There are two intervals a to b and p to q. The length of these two intervals are same. In uniform distribution, the probabilities of x being in these two intervals a to b and p to q are same. Rather, it is same for any interval between m and n, having the same length. Here the probability does not depend upon the position of that interval, but on the length of the interval. Consequently, the PDF of uniform distribution is flat. It is equal to 1 by n minus m. The CDF is x minus m divided by n minus m. Here are the mean and variance for uniform distribution. Mean is n plus m divided by 2 and the variance is n minus m whole square divided by 12. Another continuous distribution that we will use frequently in our work is exponential distribution. The PDF of exponential distribution is an exponential function lambda into e to the power minus lambda x. Here x is greater or equal to 0. Lambda is called the rate parameter. It decides how fast the exponential function decays. I have shown the PDF for two values of lambda. 
The CDA for exponential distribution is equal to 1 minus e to the power minus lambda x. The mean of exponential distribution is 1 by lambda and the variance is 1 by lambda square. Take a simple numerical problem x follows exponential distribution with lambda equal to 0.2. What is the probability of x lying in the interval 1 to 1.5? We have to use the definition of PDF to calculate this probability. Replace fx of x by the PDF of exponential distribution and then do the integration from a to b. We get that the probability is equal to e to the power minus a lambda minus e to the power minus b lambda. Now plug the numerical values of a, b and lambda in this. So the probability that x is in between 1 and 1 1.5 is 0 0.0779. Here is a graphical representation of our calculation. The blue line is the PDF. The pink area is the probability that x is in between 1 and 1.5. So just to remind you again, the PDF is not the probability. The area under the PDF curve is the probability. Another common distribution is normal distribution. Normal distribution has two parameters, mean mu and variance sigma square. Here is the PDF of normal distribution. Normal distribution is symmetric and bell-shaped. Standard normal distribution is frequently used in stochastic modeling and statistics. Its mean is 0 and variance is 1. So the PDF of standard normal distribution is 1 by square root of 2 pi into e to the power minus x square by 2. Normal distribution is symmetric and bell-shaped. Binomial distribution is also symmetric and bell-shaped when the probability of success is 0.5. So we can approximate a binomial distribution by a normal distribution. We can do that only when the number of trial n is large and the probability of success p is close to 0.5. With these two conditions met, calculate the mean and variance of binomial. Those two would be n into p and n into p into 1 minus p. The approximating normal distribution will also have the same mean and variance. Here is the binomial distribution with p equal to 0.52 close to 0.5 and n equal to 40. The mean is 20.8 and the variance is 9.984. Here is the approximating normal distribution with mean 20.8 and variance 9.984, that blue line. The approximation is excellent. This way, we can also approximate a Poisson distribution using normal distribution. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching.